Yesterday, Tom Telesco dropped some very, very interesting information on the Las Vegas Raiders as we kind of head into the 2024 NFL draft, the actual season. And today we're going to talk about it. One of the very first hints that this guy dropped was when he was asked about running back Alexander Madison and kind of what he brings to the Raiders. One of the things Telesco said is that he's a very solid scheme fit. Uh, he said that Madison ran a very similar scheme in his first few years. Keep in mind, the Vikings have had two regimes over the Alexander Madison five years that he was with the Vikings. So in the first three years, you had Mike Zimmer, who was a defensive-minded guy, with Kevin Stefanski as the offensive coordinator. Now, Stefanski at the moment is the Cleveland Browns head coach. Uh, so you can go and watch what Stefanski kind of does, and you can kind of understand what Luke Getze will do for the Raiders. And you know what's interesting, because it doesn't surprise me, because I watched a lot of Bears tape over the past two seasons uh, while Getze was there. And you saw the same exact things that Stefanski kind of runs now with the Browns. And it just makes sense. Let's just talk about exactly what the Raiders will do. Uh, so when the Raiders initially had John Gruden, one of the interesting things was, you know, we drafted Colton Miller. Andre James kind of came out of nowhere at that point. Uh, and within that regime specifically, we ran a lot of inside zone, right? 70, 75% of the time we're running some sort of zone concept. Uh, but it was primarily with an emphasis on the inside zone. And what's interesting about that is that when you're running a lot of inside zone, you're not running as much power. And when Josh McDaniels came in, we completely flipped. We ran power like 85% of the, you know, plus percent of the time. So we went complete 180. You know, most teams are between 40 and 60%, right? So they run both schemes. John Gruden was on one end and, and Josh McDaniels was on the other. And you got to keep in mind, some offensive linemen are built for specific schemes, right? Guys that are quicker and faster are zone guys. Guys that are more powerful are power guys, right? They're slower, but they're stronger at the point of attack. And uh, the Raiders offensive line, specifically with the left tackle center, who are kind of the cornerstone pieces, even Dylan Parham, I would say, fits more so of a zone scheme. Uh, now the Raiders are bringing in Luke Getze, and now we're going to run more zone. Now, Getze is a little bit different than John Gruden. John Gruden ran a lot of inside zone, mid zone. Um then that's a little bit different than what Getty's going to do, right? Getty's going to run more wide zone and outside zone, right? So outside zone is is mostly attacking the very, very far end. Uh, it's what Kyle Shanahan does a ton, right? He attacks the outside. Uh, and Shanahan's scheme is one of the best schemes out there, right? I think most people would agree with that. Mike McDaniel runs outside zone a ton as well. The play's really meant to go outside. And if it doesn't go outside... The guys are basically going to run out of bounds. Maybe they found a cutback lane, but generally speaking, the point of outside zone is to attack the outside. And then you got wide zone, which is really the inside hip of the tight end. Uh, and we're going to see the Raiders run a ton of that. We're going to attack the edge. We're going to attack the, you know, right outside the tackle inside of the tight end. We're going to be hitting the outside and wide zone a ton. And to me, those are the ways to have success. You know, when you run inside zone, there's so many more players that are kind of involved when you run to the outside, it's really just your your tackle and your tight end that have to be able to reach, right? Your tackle has to reach the tight end. I'm sorry, your tackle has to reach the edge, which releases the tight end up to the linebacker or the safety, whoever kind of flashes first. Uh, and to me, for the Raiders, that's kind of what makes sense. You look at Colton Miller, he does a great job reaching. He's a zone guy specifically. He can play both schemes, but Colton Miller will, will have more success within the zone. So to me, I love the fact that we got that inside, right? That we're going to be running primarily that. Um, and I think Tom Telesco is right in what we should do because those are the schemes that I think have the most success if you look around the NFL. Uh, more so than that, he also gave us a little bit more information. He says that the running back will be a committee approach, which we've known in the past. Uh, but he said it'll be three to four running backs. And at the moment, I think we really only have two running backs that I would say are even capable of actually playing in the NFL. Now, Amir Abdullah, he's an okay running back. We have a couple younger guys that I don't think will really translate into the NFL. Um, at least not this year. We have Amir Abdullah. It's kind of an interesting player, but uh, maybe he's he's really just that third down back. And so maybe he's one of the three, but he said three to four. So there's a chance the Raiders do ultimately attack the running back position through the draft, right? So I'm excited for the draft to kind of come up now. He was also asked a little bit about the offensive line. He said some interesting things with that. Uh, he said re-signing Andre James uh, was was really, really good for the Raiders. Right? It was something we had to do. Uh, he talked about how you know he's been a solid center in the NFL. Uh, but he also went on to say that it's going to be a scheme fit. Andre James is a scheme fit for this scheme. 
right? And that makes sense as well. Andre James is not a power guy. The guy cannot hold his ground. The guy cannot down block, back block. The guy will not have success being able to do that. Um, but when it comes to zone and he's reaching, the guy's a phenomenal center in that part of his game. Now, Tom Tusco did say that you have to have a great center in the NFL to basically be able to have success within place, right? He, 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 and I'm paraphrasing. He didn't say those exact words. But that's kind of what he was kind of getting to. And I do find it interesting because Andre James has still struggled when it comes to pass protection. And uh, I wonder how much Tom Telesco has really analyzed Andre James' pass, pass protection specifically. Now, do keep in mind, you know, we have uh, scouts within the building. We have other coaches and other people within the building that were already here. Uh, but I do find it interesting nonetheless. And I also do understand Tom, uh, Tom Telesco doesn't want to spend a ton of money. You know, I mean, he may not want to put the investments when it comes to draft picks where you're picking a center in the top two rounds. Maybe he wants to go like around four or five for a guy that can develop. Maybe that's what Tom Plesko ultimately will end up doing. We'll see what ends up happening, but uh, he did talk a little bit about Andre James. He also said that last year, run game-wise, we were a bottom five in rushing last year. He said our offense line was a bottom five rushing offensive line. Uh, that I 100% agree with. We were terrible last year. Uh, we were absolutely terrible when it came to being able to run the football. Uh, even in pass pro, we're okay. We weren't that good. But I think pass pro, we're a little bit better than when it came to uh, the run game. Now, with pass pro specifically, I think one of the things is, is you can chip with the tight end. You can chip with the running back on 80% of plays. And that's going to help your offensive line have that time. It's going to help your quarterback be able to get the ball out. Um, and when it comes to run blocking specifically, you're oftentimes not double teaming. You're oftentimes not getting all the help that you would when it comes to pass pro. All right, so it does make it that if you don't have good individual offensive alignment when it comes to run blocking, you're not going to have success, right? And I think that is one of the things with the Raiders last year is our offensive line wasn't that good. I think Dylan Parham struggled, Arnold James struggled, uh, our right tackle, rather, was Darren Munford, Jermaine Illuminor. They had their struggles in and out. Uh, I think Colton Miller was a very good left tackle, but he also missed games towards the end of the season. Greg Van Roten sucked at the beginning, got way better towards the end, so it's kind of inconsistent. But the biggest thing that Tom Telesco said, talking about Thayer Munford, I'm not surprised at all. Uh, he was talking about Thayer Munford. And he said he's an interesting play player. Uh, he'll have his chance. He said, rather that's at tackle or at guard. Tom Telesco has now labeled Thayer Munford as a possible guard. To me, that's that's this massive, right? Thayer Munford is like 6'6". Right, so he's not super tall for an offensive tackle, right? Because Colt Miller, for example, is like 6'8". So he's super tall. Uh, but Darren Munford is heavy. He is long, lengthy, heavy. And when I say long, his arm reach is incredibly long. And you can see that on tape. Um, but Darren Munford is heavy. He's a little bit slower. And uh, when you think about a right tackle like Darren Munford, as a tackle specifically, he's not going to fit the wide zone, outside zone. He's not going to be able to reach defensive ends. And his tape does not lie. But you can watch his tape. He's not able to do that, right? So right away, Thayer Munford within this scheme is not a good fit. Right? Thayer Munford will not be a tackle for the Raiders. I can guarantee you guys that right now, especially with the Luke Getty scheme. Uh, one of the things a tackle has to do is, you know, if the, if the, uh, if the defensive end is playing a wide nine, uh, because there's a, a tight end next to you, that tackle has to reach that defensive end and seal him off. And that's a hard thing to do if you're not super fast and super quick. It's a part of why Kyle Shanahan goes with uh, right tackles that aren't good in pass pro, but they're great run blockers, right? He had Mike McGlinchey for a number of years. Now they got Colton McKibbitts, same exact style. Both guys are average in pass pro, kind of suck to be honest, but they're great run blockers. They do a fantastic job reaching, right? It's because they're so quick. And, uh, to me, that's what the Raiders need in their tackle. So we already got that in Colton Miller. We've got to get that in our right tackle. Now, it will, it'll be interesting to see if Dalton Wagner could ultimately play right tackle for the Raiders. I think Wagner will definitely be our swing tackle. right? I think he's going to develop into that. I don't know if Tom Telesco is going to give him the opportunity to compete for the starting job as opposed to just going out and drafting the guy in the first round. Uh, keep in mind, you know, if we get a first-round tackle... It's not an open job anymore, right? That first round tackle is the starting right tackle. And Dalton Wagner at that point will be the swing tackle. He'll be the backup tackle. And uh, to me, it's going to be interesting as we kind of get into this, because I think Darren Munford kind of being labeled as a guard is what he is, right? He's 6'6", six, six, massive, right? 340 plus long frame. Uh, even as a guard, it'll be interesting to see if he can actually pan out. But 
here's the thing, right? If their mantra transitions to right guard, I'd be a lot more comfortable with him playing right guard because you're you're shortening the distance. As a right tackle, you got to get out in space, and now you're playing in space. A guy can go inside, a guy can go outside, and you got to counter all that, right? Especially if you don't have a tight end out there. One of the things we've got to understand with Getty's team is we're going to be five-man protecting a ton, right? So what that means is your five offensive linemen are going to be tasked to picking up the four guys up front. We're not going to have chips. We're not going to have the running back staying and blocking and helping. The t- we're not going to have that. We're going to have four wide receivers. We're going to have a tight end. And it's going to be in a shotgun formation. The quarterback's going to make the read. And the offense line got to do their job. And with Munford out in space, I think that's personally a weakness that the Raiders could have going into the season. But of course, if Munford plays guard, he's not in that much space. All right? Don't get me wrong. Teams are still going to attack Munford. They're going to put a guy off the three technique. They're going to put a guy on the outside. They're going to line up a nose right over the center. So you can't slide that way. And they're going to put Munford in a one-on-one until he proves it. But at guard, I think he could be a much better guard. So we'll see what ends up happening. But Tom Cusco did mention that he may play guard. He may play tackle. We'll see what ends up happening. Uh, we got some other interesting information as well. So uh, this isn't as big, right? But uh, Tom Klesko was asked a little bit about Christian Wilkins and kind of what he brings. Uh, he told us the same thing that Christian Wilkins has already kind of told us. You know, uh, as a player, uh, Wilkins doesn't come around that often, that caliber of player. We know that factually, right? You don't get that caliber of player get open into the free agent market and have the ability to pick his team. More so than that, you can't double everyone. We kind of know that. Um, he also said, you know, Christian Wilkins can be one of those game changing players for the Raiders. That makes sense. All that's great. But then he talked a little bit about Tyree Wilson. Uh, and he said there's a, a possibility that Tyree Wilson might possibly play on the inside. And he, he didn't talk too much about it, right? He just kind of made the comment, you know, talking about Christian Wilkins and uh, how Max Crosby's on one side, Christian Wilkins, and then uh, you'll get Malcolm Clemson on the opposite side. And then he threw in there, yeah, and then maybe get Tyree Wilson out there too, right? And can't double everybody. To me, that's an interesting remark, right? But it also does kind of tell me that the Raiders will not be drafting a defensive end, especially not in the first or second round. Uh, we talked about this in yesterday's video. I said there's a chance the Raiders could take a defensive end uh, if, if one does fall to you that you like enough, uh, solely because of the fact that Malcolm Coons could ultimately end up leaving uh, Tyree Wilson may permanently get moved to D-tackle, and then you may need a defense man at that point. But I think it's smarter to keep that pick, you know, put it somewhere else, re-sign Malcolm Kuntz. The hope is that we can pay him now as opposed to waiting until after the season. Even if he doesn't become a top 10 defensive end, even if he's a top 25 or 30 defensive end, I'm okay with that. I saw his tape. He's good enough. I think the Raiders got to re-sign him. Let's see what Tyree Wilson can develop into. And to me, I think that's going to be interesting. Don't. Tyree Wilson may play on the inside. We'll see if that actually happens. Uh, He touched on a couple more things I want to get into. Uh, The first was the quarterback position. He said adding Garner Minshew allows you to have a quarterback that competes with Aiden O'Connell. He's a guy that can help develop Aiden O'Connell. And I kind of just found that interesting a little bit, right? Because uh, a lot of us Raider fans aren't sold on these two quarterbacks, right? Especially after what we saw last year with Jimmy G, you know, we got sold this idea that Jimmy G is going to come in, the scheme make, will make him better. It'll allow us to have success. Uh, none of that really happened. And I think going into this year, adding Gardner Minshew, yeah, he's a little bit different than Jimmy G, but you know, Gardner Minshew hasn't shown me enough flashes where you're going to say this guy can become the next Patrick Mahomes. This guy can become the next Josh Allen or you know, one of these top seven quarterbacks that elevates an offense and can get you into the playoffs, get you into the Super Bowl. Gardner Minshew doesn't really show that for me, right? Um, so I'm going to be hesitant to really 100% commit to this. But the fact that Tom Tuscus says Gardner Minshew will compete with Aiden and he can help develop Aiden also makes me feel that there's a chance the Raiders just roll forward with Aiden O'Connell as the quarterback. Uh, there's a chance that the Raiders don't look forward to trading up or, or whatever. Uh, some people have talked about the fact that uh, we've never really, or Tom Tusco's never really traded up in the draft. He's usually kind of just stuck where he's at and made his pick. I'm okay with that approach as well, but uh, we'll see, right? I'm not too sold on the quarterback situation. We've got to get better. Don't want to talk too much about it. We've talked about it plenty. Final thing that Tom Tusco said, and this one was kind of interesting. He was talking about the secondary, specifically the cornerbacks. Uh, he says, you know, Hobbs is a proven player. He said Brandon Faison was hurt last year, but he's had some really, really good years in the NFL. And Jack Jones looks really, really good. But then he added in there. He says, we have some good pieces there, but I think we'll probably have to add some more. 
to me, that's interesting as hell, right? To me, it's interesting that we were told by Tom Telesco that we'll have to probably add some more pieces. You know, to me, words matter, right? The, the little things that Tom Telesco says, and he may not realize it uh, because he's doing this interview, he's open about it. And Tom Telesco does have that approach. And I love that about Tom Telesco. He's open about things. He's honest, at least from what I can see. Uh, and he's he's not one of those general managers that's like super, I'm not going to give you any sort of answer. I'm going to just be politically correct. I'm going to just say what you need to hear and I'm going to move on. He doesn't do that, right? He has fun. He laughs. He gives you insight. He gives you details. Uh, he talked about even at one point how, you know, they kind of go through a, a mock draft as like a, you know, as like people, they come together as a group. Uh, they'll go through all the different scenarios and they'll practice it. And I know I've known that. I'm sure a lot of you guys have known that, but I think it's cool that he actually gave us a little bit of detail about how that kind of works. Right. Um, but the fact that he went out and, and stated with his words that uh, we'll probably have to add some more there to me is interesting. It doesn't imply that we're going to take one in the first round because right after he state, made that statement, uh, he then followed that up with saying like, you know, we got to make sure we have our depth. We got to make sure we, you know, if a guy gets hurt, we can go to another guy. So he kind of threw that in there as well. But uh, I think the first sentence he said was kind of interesting, right? And then he talked and then he threw that depth piece in there as well. So I think it's interesting. Keep an eye on the Raiders actually drafting a cornerback with pick 13. I wouldn't mind it. Uh, if you get yourselves, you know, a Namdi small Jalen Ramsey caliber corner, right? If you take one of the top two corners, I think you can get that out of those guys. But if you end up hitting on a corner this season, think about what that could do for the Raiders defense. You got a really good corner opposite of Jack Jones, Nate Hobbs in the middle. You got two pretty good safeties. You got pretty good linebackers and you got a monster defensive line. I mean, that defense right there, you're looking at a top five defense, right? So I'm excited for it, man. We'll see what ends up happening. I love the Tom Tusco interview. You guys should go check it out. I'll pin it down below in the comments. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.